feel this often telling you, not everything's about you. To me it is. <laughs> So, um, let's look up what contacts are from. There's not a lot of them. There's not a lot of them. And then I've got pretty pictures. So, oh, actually, we can do one that's on the review. Let's go ahead and have that page there. Uh, but I don't have a blank one. I'll tell you what. This used to be a whole separate class. And I said, yeah, you know, make it a part of the Okay, so here is a uh, problem out of some other book, and I can't see it. So we have um, a 0.25 inch quarter inch diameter ball that's uh, loaded in compression. I don't know why there's two things right there. I don't know what they're trying to do. But it's mostly confusing. Um, by a 1,000 pound force uh, against the left end of the bar where the cross section is one inch. One inch by one inch, I guess. I don't know what the hell that is. Is it one inch, one inch? Um, the balls are hardened steel and the steel bar has a yield strength of 50 KSI. What maximum contact stress will result from the load of the 1,000 pounds. And I have no idea why this thing is, is I, I don't know if that's a distractor. It's weird. Okay, if there is one inch this way, so I guess it is, but it looks round, doesn't it? No, yeah, they have it. They have because they're putting that little thingy on it. Yeah. Anyway, I guess they're both, uh, well, one is, one, one, the ball is a hardened steel, and the bar is this, so it seems like they're two different things. Let's just go ahead and say, okay, cool. Well, I'm putting down the information. I wanted, this is what I decided to use for the material right here because it doesn't really matter whether the thing is hardened or whatever. It always has, you know, no matter what your heat treatment is, it doesn't change the elastic modulus of the sound's ratio. And because of the nature of the, of these types of problems or, you know, where, this is an estimate, right? There, we don't have to go crazy with the. Heat treatment does not change the elastic modulus. No, it only changes the. Uh, I mean, you know, maybe, the, the, maybe theoretically, I mean, you might find some kind of min, my, my new change. I don't know if you could. I don't know if across the board you could say that for all materials, but basically, it doesn't go down. So it doesn't matter what heat treatment you give to the the steel. Or, no. Is it going on, on the surface there? No, no, the heat treatment's all the way through, but it just doesn't change the the, the, the grip that the uh, grains have against each other. Their stiffness doesn't change their stiffness, it changes their strength. I guess it's sort of the grip they have. Um, so we're going to go through this chapter three. We need to look up uh, for this problem. So let me read down some of the particulars here. Um, so we have this ball. Up against a flat thing, we got um, 1,000 pounds acting up to this thing, and this is one quarter inch. And I decided that there's steel, so it's 30 million psi. Um, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio of 0.3. So, because we have a, uh, a sphere going as good as a flat plate, we can go use a spherical uh, equation for the amount of this uh, deformation, for the radius of the deformation. So, that equation right here. Of course, the next thing we're going to do, oh, we'll also define, we said, what's the maximum contact stress? So, this is basically what we're going to uh, uh, be looking for. This is, the ma this is the maximum contact stress right here, that actually, the, the phrasing of it. But we also probably want to know the maximum shear that's going to be uh, occurred because of this, right? So, this is going to be a large.
larger number. And um, and the, I think I'm pretty sure I wrote this directly from the uh, the other textbook. And they have a slightly change, different. Um, uh, some of them have slightly different terminology, but they're all pretty much the same. Um, so we have 3F over 8, and we go 1 minus mu 1 squared divided by E1 plus 1 minus mu 2 squared divided by E2. And 1 over D1 plus 1 over D2. So I start filling this thing out. 3 times 1,000 divided by 8. Um, so we go, this is, there's, both of these are the same thing, this one and this one. So we just go 2 times it, happens a lot. 1 uh, minus, I guess this is my square. I, got, I think I put my square in on the spot right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, sorry. Easy to do. I would. I think these problems kind of like play and chug, really. Probably not that much to them. Um, and then the elastic modulus, as I said, is 30e6. And once again, I'm going to uh, make a pitch for my firm fixed belief that this is the way to approach a lot of engineering calculations is to go to base units. So messing around with units. Oh, by the way, I forgot my keyboard again. Okay. And uh, um, so this is 0.25. And then this is plus 1 infinity divided by infinity. So A, uh, according to what I have here, is I did the cube root point zero one seven eight five inches. That's pretty small. That'd be tough to see. Where did the two come from? Okay. Uh, because we had to do th this is for material one and this is for material two. Since they were the same material, I just said I have to take a two of them. And then, so if you want to go P max, remember that's sort of, that that's sort of like in the in the flattened area that would be like right there. This would be where the P max is. It uh, ends up being 3 times F divided by 2 pi A squared, which is basically just 1.5 F over A. So 3 and 1,000, 2 pi, and then 0 0.01785 squared. Or 1,498.5 KSI. That's a lot of KSI. Considering that our generic steel is 36 KSI yield strength, or A36, 36 KSI. That's a lot. Um, and then that's probably that's what basically what the, the problem was asking because they said. What is the maximum contact stress? And I know that says P right here, but that's the same thing as this right here, right? The, 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 I mean, or the negative. This is, this is the contact stress, the maximum there on the surface. But as we met, as had been mentioned, uh, and by, by the way, you could also see that if you wanted to. Um, Like right here, this is z z squared over a squared. All right, so this is this is the contact in the z direction. And going back over here, remember that the z direction is downwards, and we're looking right here in the center. Like in here, you're superimposed right there. They're showing 
this distribution of stress underneath the surface right here. But if you go to, so, so Z, it, that Z parameter, but the Z, Z at the surface is zero. So you can see that that means that that just equals that. Right? So, so I, I, I'm only mentioning that because, yeah, I understand. That says, that says you know, pressure. Like the P looks like pressure, and it is pressure backing onto the thing, but they're equal to each other in terms of the maximum uh, stress. And notably, it gets smaller and smaller as Z gets bigger. Right, as you go deeper, up to up to a point, uh, um, right, right there. Actually, I'm not sure. Does that does that start getting? No, I guess it starts to get smaller and smaller. I'll take that back. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Um. But what we care about, what we, we would often care about, right? So this other book was only asking for that. But we we kind of care about what's going on underneath the surface and this maximum shear. And so uh, it's 0.48 is the location of it, but the value is 0.3. So you can kind of see that that's point. Can I see this more here? So let me get this tau max. It would be 0.3 times T max. Or 0.3 times 1,400. 98.5, so you could go ahead and say 1,500. Um, so this is a 449.6 KSI. So that's what I answered. But still, once again, that's that's much larger than the, the yield strength, although we're going to learn pretty soon that maximum shear stress theory. So here is, here, here is foreshadowing. Foreshadow is that one word? Foreshadow. Mm -hmm. um, what's going to come up is we're going to have like uh, uh, um, I'm losing my mind here. We have yield strength of something, right? And th but this is based on normal stress. Sometimes we use though instead of using normal stress, we use shear stress as the means. So uh, um, you know this is this is the you know the, the limit that uh, in a pull test, I'm not sure why I'm drawing a pull test here, but we have like a little pull test machine, right? With the little materials in a chalk right in the thing. And they, yeah, yeah. And they pull it apart. But that's normal stress. All we're measuring is normal stress. So in order to like, and this is going to be the theme of the class foreshadowing, I'm going to ask the same question over and over again. And this is always going to be the answer. Happens to happens. What's going to be the theme of the class moving forward? Force over area. Force over area. Don't do that. Bernoulli. 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 You know what? Okay. But apples to apples. And you can make a little, little thing there. And, and we can draw a worm inside and point to that. That's the reflection off the apple. Um, so what we need to do is the, 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 the reason why that's the theme is we're trying to find out when something breaks. So we need in order. So we're always going to stress and strength, and we're going to make. And in order to make to compare those two, we have to figure out a way so they're comparable. And sometimes we have to change our stress. Sometimes we have to change our strength. And you're going to see it keeps happening over and over and over again. So you go, why the hell did we do that? Mm, apples out. Sometimes it's, a, it's a, like it's seemingly strange. We always try to. I'll try to always make it so you can remember why we're doing something. So it isn't like a plug and chug, but there is a certain amount of plugging and chugging that goes into it. But trying to keep our brains in and, and always remember apples. Apples is our motivation. So um, we will find soon that there's two different uh, yield strengths that we can look at something that's going to be the shear yield, and that's going to have maximum shear stress. It says it's one half of the normal shear. So this is the strength that we find from the um, from the pole test. Um, so that uh, so maximum shear stress theory MSST says this, but von Mises, which is distortion energy theory, says this right here. So you're gonna you know this information before your of course everybody's process today. But just to let you know.
know that's coming up soon. So if you want to like assess, what is, oh, wow, that's a lot of stress. Well, okay, how much is it? You would do uh, something along these lines. Um, there is, a, a, in the book, there is a, a, uh, a little section there on compression. Compression is a little bit different from, from tension. Most of the time we treat things, because right here, we're not doing a compression test, we're doing a tension test. So, and some materials, it's quite different. So, anyway, some more information than you needed, but now you got some bonus information of things coming up. So, you want to try to assess how much is 449.6 ASI. Well, it is a large number, um, and, but the results of this could be. Well, that's yield, right? That this, uh, you know, if we're looking at strength, this is a yield strength type of thing. All right, so 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 there's a little marketing. Even can you work? Can die, can break. Like, they all know we have the high stress. All right, so there was a uh, thing. I don't know. Not much fun. Just like two calculus, three calculus. Um. So I'm taking requests. Don't ask for your name or anything. I don't know that. I'll pick up my wife. Curve beans. Curve beans. Okay. Let's see. Um, got a couple in there. Got a lot of interesting ones. Because once again, that takes too long. Yeah. 
it deals with three three line diagrams. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll give you one of the shear moment diagrams. I'll give it to you. Okay. Yeah, and so you only have to do it in one plane and then combine them. And then usually ask the more circle principal stress stuff. And then maybe a pressure press. So but, but that sounds like a lot, but the, I, I try not to make them too crazy. I've tried to do like a pressure vessel with some other thing happening to it. Like, you know, I don't know. Make a, uh, make a, I don't know, that looks bad. Uh, like, okay, so here, here, here is the, uh, uh, like may, may, maybe hang a weight or something on this right here. But it's, a, but it's a pressure vessel, right? And I say, okay, well, here's a, here's a little guy right there. Or, or you can go this guy right there, okay. So I'm going to ask you, okay, find the stresses if you had some kind of weight. And I don't know why that looks like Idaho. Maybe I'm still thinking about Carla. Um, <laughs> anyway, find the stresses there, right? So you, you, have, you have bending going on that's causing compression onto this. But we also have the uh, elastic on the outside surface, and you just know, like three out of the twenty students, or what we don't have twenty now. Uh, three, three of them will tell me there's radial stress on there. They just will, even though it's on the outside surface. They, they just, they just will. It just so happens. So it's like you don't even want to bring it up because radial stress. Nothing, even, nothing that you talk about is useful. Gravitate towards the radial stress. Like it's only. Not even not, it only happens on the inside, and it's just equal to the pressure, so it's usually not even all that much. But anyway, uh, uh, so that's usually something, something along those lines. And I, I got to do a pressure vessel, but I also want like you know the principal stresses on this, um, which is sort of a trick, like a trap. But I always want you to like draw an element, right? So this element we would be looking at it. You know, get get a. I mean, that's X, and this is the Y here. Uh, let's see, if we're looking upwards at the thing, as he's coming at us. It depends if you're going to the left or the right. I like to go X this direction. So, I'm going to get this Z wrong. Huh? How's that going to happen? Z, uh, going that way? I think so. I'm messing this up. If I look down at this one right there, right? I have, a, I'm doing that one, yeah, so Z has to go there, and I got it right. No, it'd be that one. Z, not that one. It's looking up onto the thing. But you have, you know, the longitudinal going that way, and you have the, um, for the bending, it's compression going this way, and then you have the, uh, the, the, the hoop. Yeah, it says C, but it's the, the tangent. Yeah, did you say tangential? Or? Yeah, it's not, I don't know in my mind, I think it's just really tangential. Yeah. And then this one's just a bending. Right. So, so you would find that, let's say the bending, depending on what my weight is going to be, right, that could be more than this one. But anyway, one thing to note is that you don't have to do, you draw more circles, but you don't have to do any calculations really with it because it doesn't have any shear. So it's like sort of a trick. So, so you're, you're, you're basically, depending on what you have, like, okay, so if this was enough to make this tension, then it would be, uh, th this was always twice this right here, right? So uh, you'd have that. And maybe you would just, this, this, this compression was just enough to reduce that, but still the main tension, you might be over there. So your more circles just going to look like that right there. And you'll have zero in the other plane. So here's your big more circle. Or this one could be more than that, and so that you could, you know, have your here's your here's your first one that's gonna be this, and then you could move over onto there. So you have more circle like that. So your other ones are gonna be right here. Usually I ask something along those lines, which is, it seems like it's a little bit like, oh, you have four problems, so like this one wouldn't take very long. Just to do. Not, I mean, especially if it's thick or thin, if it, 
I, I, I make sure the thing is thin, it's a quicker one to work through. Okay. And let's go to a curved beam. I have asked uh, simple curved beams, either a circle or a square cross section. I wouldn't ask you any that would take you too long to uh, um, to go through uh, this table because that's just a, a, a obnoxiously long. Right? And, and so, so having any of these, asking any anything but the circle and, and this would be just cruel. Take a look at um, uh, okay. Let's take a look at this one. I've never done this one before. Interesting. It's a twelve. Uh, so um, we're gonna find out. Shown in the figure is twelve gauge, which they tell you is point one zero nine four inches of three quarter inch. So I guess that's three quarter inch wide uh, latching spring. That supports a load of three pounds. The inside radius bend is one eighth of an inch. Using the straight beam theory, to determine the stresses at the top and bottom surfaces immediately to the right of the bend. So right there. Focus on the camera. I'm sorry. Is it a little? There is a little tiny one. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. All right. So. 
So let's try this thing out.
four over two over R C. So I go point one oh nine four two divided by one two five plus point one seven nine seven inches. Um and then our R N. And so this this by the way, remember these could use some additional sig figs. Um my calculator. My, I'm gonna keep it in my calculator. Alright, so you know, I'm only showing five sig figs in my calculator, but um it's stored right now so that if it did extend on it. I wanna subtract these two from each other, so I want to avoid clearing your calculator and uh, and, and resetting, but I'm, I'm sure most everybody has the type of the TI or ADI or whatever the hell it is, whatever, 1994 or something, I don't know. It's a TI. Um, all right, so this is going to be H divided by the natural log of RO, RO over RI. H point one oh nine four divided by L N and uh yeah, so this is where I have a problem right here. So I might actually you know gotta be careful gotta be careful again to, to write this thing down later on. No no we're, that's what we're doing right now. I'm losing it. Okay, cool. Sorry. R O point two three four four zero divided by uh, our I, or point one two five. So I'll go point two three four four point one two five divided natural log. Oh, it's gonna find that guy. Where'd he go? Oh, there's a little on the blue right there. Boom, natural log. Zero point one seven four zero one inches. So you see how close they are to each other. So when you subtract them, you know, you wanna we wanna have plenty of sig figs because they're gonna get rid of you know, we're gonna lose the one in the seven, so you know, we if if we use this one right here, we'd only have thirty sig figs. Um so anyway, I get E, which is R uh C, yeah, C minus R in it. It's going to be a positive value, so. And I get 5.694 RC is always greater than minus. Yeah. E to the minus 3. And I don't know if they call it eccentricity anywhere, but that's kind of what it is. It's because it has an E, right? So a lot of times when things aren't where they're supposed to be, we call them eccentric. And professors who aren't, don't think the way that they're supposed to think are also eccentric. But the cool part of the job is you get to be weird. We're going to be weird anyway. But, um, okay, so I didn't obey the rules as they had made them for this and uh, and, uh, and did part A for I didn't do part A first, which is just to find the stress right here. All right, so they're saying, and, and so personally what I'm gonna, mm, I guess now, what, what, I, I'll go ahead and read what they said. Okay, so first thing, so we're gonna go to stresses. Actually, we should do loads, but we should do loads, sorry. If I do my regular thing. So, Loads. Boring as heck right here, but necessary. Um, you know what? I'm gonna just gonna ignore it. I, I'm gonna be a bad boy. And and they, they said to do it right here. I'm just gonna treat that like it's four inches because I'm just ignore it there. Because I don't know. Try to be good at that. Yeah. I know. Kind of, kind of, kind of being like, 
Yeah, you're being a little pedantic. Um, okay, so here's my reaction in the y direction. And I should label this an FBD. So FBD, label this right there. Here's our X and here's our Y. Um, and that's going clockwise, and this can go counterclockwise. There you go. And that value right there, we're just going to say it's 4 inches. We could say it's four, uh, 3 point Eight seven five is that? Let's just say. Let's go. Some of the moments are equal to zero, and I know it seems very uh, pedantic. Uh, M uh, a minus uh, three times four equals zero. M is equal to twelve. Inch pound. Um, so if we were to find, okay, so let's find the um, uh, I for this thing. It's going to be H cubed over 12, where B is 0.75, and I just thought so. How come we never did any? Oh, wow! We never did. We didn't do anything with the width of this yet. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Um. Anyway, the 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 H is point one zero nine four cubed over twelve. So that should have been some of my geometry up there. So I should pull up right back up there. And so we're going to go 0 0.1094 and 3 raised to that, 0.75 times 12. All right. So we have, oh, big number, 8.1834e to the minus 5 inches fourth. And like I said, I should have put him up there. So, well, oh, oh, cloud, I'm actually going to. Uh, so now we have the stresses. Okay, so MC over I. So 12. And uh, so we're going to take 0 0.1094 over 2 and divide it by our 8.1834E minus 5. So we get 8.021 KSI. Now we will go to the, uh, the stresses. Oh, um, one thing we need um, also, in, also geometry, sorry. Jumping around here. We need the area of this, which is just going to be 0 0.1094 multiplied by 3 quarters. Zero point zero eight oh five zero square inches. This is interesting because this is actually an instance for the curved beam where we don't have a combined stress problem. Because there's no tension, no axial, I should say, no, no, I should always say tension. There's no axial stress. It's only a bend. So we really only have these two guys right in there. And let me go back to the, uh, the, the problem. Did it say whether actually bend uh, attention. There it said the 
services on the inner and outer surfaces. The top and bottom surfaces are just plus and minus the same value here that we just found in the, a moment ago. Now let's go back to here and find the uh, stress zone. Um, so this is uh, part A. Part B, we find uh, the inner one is going to be M C I over A. Oh, we, oh, we need the CIs. Oh, sorry, R. So we need more geometry up here, I forgot to do. Um, do we have a general equation for the CIs? We could think our way through them. Uh, it's usually just subtracting them out, right? So that you have, uh, you know, you have your, if, if I could, I almost kind of want to make this a larger drawing. Maybe easier to see it off of this, yeah, go here, and say that C, I, is going to be Rn minus Ri. CO is going to be Ro minus Rn. Because that's the neutral axis, the N one, right? So we want this distance right in there. So, I'm going to put this other color here. CI, as I just said, short attention span, is going to be RN minus RI. So, 0 0.1740. 401. Minus R I is point one two five. That's going to get out of the way. Don't have to put up a book. This is not good. Paper, not good paper management. Bad paper manager. Zero point zero four nine zero one. Oh. And then, uh, that was CI, it looks like an O, CI, it would be RO minus RN. So, RO, we said somewhere up here was 0 0.23440 minus 0 0.17401. Two, three, four, four, point one, seven, four, oh, one. So, zero point zero six three. Oh, there's a zero in there. Sorry. Six zero three nine zero. So here we would go for we have what we twelve times C I, which is point zero four nine zero one uh, divided by area, which was point zero eight zero five zero E, which 5.6944 E minus 3, and then lastly RI, which is E.125. And this inner one, by the way, is going to be compression, right? Looking back at the diagram, what we had up here, we're pushing down inside, so that's going to squish. That fiber right here. It's going to try to pull pull the fibers apart, squish the fibers together. So lots of numbers. Twelve point zero four nine zero one times point zero eight zero five divided five point six nine four four e three minus. Divided and then point one two five divided, and so 
end up getting is either negative, but I'm going to call it, right, I'm, I'm going to put a, a C at the end of it, so. Uh, we're going to get 10.26 KSI compression. And then um, for the outer one, not really much changes with these, right? Just see C I and R. So M C O over A E R O twelve C O was Point zero six zero three nine area. Did I ever hit record? I did. Okay. Um, zero eight five zero E. expecting it to be larger than that, for sure. That was orange is enough to be Traffic here. The tickets were six o'clock. 
lot, so I got to drive home and then drive down there. And my wife is never going to watch this, right? She's never watched this, so we can make. So we can say something. She is the worst driver in the entire world. I mean, I love this woman, but and and the kids like we we try not to. She knows that I don't feel comfortable with her driving. But so I I just I have not said a thing in years and years and years. But I gotta tell you, it's it's scary. It's just scary. She she sees a brake light far in the distance, and her foot slams the brakes. So like you know like so like I can't sleep on long trips and stuff like that. I can't tell you how many times I've woken up. And <laughs> Pushed up against my seatbelt. And she's like, what? <laughs> she's an overbreaker. But she also fidgets all the time. Fidgets all the time. Drives in her hands. <sighs> Out of the lane all the time right there. Speeds up. She gets, she gets confrontation. Not, not, uh, machine's not there yet. And um, so her driving down, to, she said, I'll drive. Uh, where are we? Should we? Okay. Oh, wait, limit. Oh, is there a limit? Is there a limit? I don't know. Is there a limit? It's just that they're all going to be the same problems that haven't changed so many. Uh, and we're in chapter three. Yeah. And they, here's, a, here's a ranting thing to do. Is why do they put them in Word? I guess you can copy and paste them, but you can't really. It's in weird, some weird font. I'm not font, but some... Uh, um, some weird archaic, you know, there's equation editor, which has been the same equation editor for a long time now. This is in the previous version of that equation editor. So you can't even edit these equations. So, like, if you, if you want to see that right there, and then they want to convert them into the editor 3.0. I don't know, weird. Just make a PDF of them. I don't understand why, why you, would, you would put it into work. And you know, while we're on this rant, everybody here at UHART does that, like, all the time. They use, like, Word files. They send out something to each other in Word files. I don't get that. Why are you doing that? I know. I would my nervous and send to you I wanted. But there's, like, forms there, the signed forms. That they just they just leave as a word document. Like, what, what's the point of signing it? Because you could change it. And someone recently, when I was pointing this out, said, "Yeah, but you could do that with a PDF too." And I'm like, "Yeah, but you know, you have to have at least you have to have that software that lets you edit the PDF." All right. So they got the same thing as me, basically, right? Yes. Ten ten point one versus six. What is what do they do at the moment? Uh, the moment what they they just went ahead and used for. <laughs> they, didn't, they, they didn't bother in the case, so I'm feeling better. Okay, not, not feeling like that. But they did draw a three body diagram, so screw them for not doing the right thing. Is there a little bit of inertia in the area that might be at all? No. Folks come in, scrap row. Eight, right there, yeah. Eight. Yeah. I don't know. It's a strange result. Strange result. You know what you gotta do? You don't like something, you make an FDA out of it. <laughs> I swear to you, how how do you think that you have to be a little, you know, be a little clever in how you model the thing, uh, what, what you want to do. You usually need to pick a part somewhere off to the side for the thing. We're going to use this like all the time. You're gonna, uh, I, I, that's, that's my, I'm going to try to do more this semester. Once you get past a certain point, there's going to be homework problems with the with the FEA in it. But I think everybody has access to this, and you'll see it. Uh, yes, yeah, to SolidWorks, this version of SolidWorks. Okay, so I should mention not every version of SolidWorks has this on here. In fact, uh, this is actually pretty nice that we have this available to us. There's no simulate. Oh, that's true. I will go ahead and make that thing first. Um, <laughs> it kind of looks mad at me. Um, I'm trying to decide how I want to make this. I'll make it this way right here. Okay. <clears throat> go up to here, go up to there, go to that, go to that, and somewhere there. Boom. And so that should be four inches. Um, this could be 
be any damn thing I want it to be. So I'm going to get go in here. Son of a bitch. I don't, I would hate it that they, they won't let you switch if you go get out and then go back in, right? It's going to be huge now. Boom. No, you're going to be, I'm just going to make this one inch. And... <laughs> that's, that's really weird. That's a really weird thing to think, by the way. This is then for you both think to think. What is, what is the thickness of this thing? One, ten ninety four. That's uh, um, Mr. Crab's daughter. Yeah. She wanted a salad. The sa a salad. I never want to do that ever again. Salad. I probably could have made this in some easier way. And boom. Uh, now I have to do math, don't I? It's true. I was thinking I should probably have done that from the beginning, huh? Depends. How bad? How bad maybe do I want to do Okay, I'll just do it. Uh, 0.125 plus 10.94. It's 0.2344. All right, is that good, right? Let's see if we can that.
stress that we care about, and of course this, these we need to change what the units are, so right click and uh, I guess I'll keep uh, Von Mises, but I can put KSI in there. And I don't quite, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm probably better to come back and readjust this later right here, but um, uh, I'll, I'll do two things here. I'll go, this is, we'll, we'll, go, we'll keep it Von Mises for right now because it's just a good thing. Uh, it says, uh, let's say it goes to 10, I'm going to go to 8 so we can see more red. What's a weird thing? I don't know. And I'm going to go regular. Let's go floating. Now let's go two date decimal places. And my color options, because that's a weird. And I'll go to 10. You can see what happens. All right, so you see, that's a, this is a weird gradation right there. I don't like that. Um, so that's why I usually fix it. And a definition, let's see. And also, I, I meant to do this. I like to go, I, I like to go discrete and then see the lines. Um, I didn't need to do that. I to do this. And a definition. Oh, down. Down there. If so, like, if you want, you said, oh, eight was eight. Eight's a good one to do. Then make it eight here. Or make it 16. So now we have nice increments. This one reminds you of that gum. Remember the zebra gum? The gum with the different foot, you know, the different colors in it. I don't know, what's, what was the name of that? Kind of gum? Zebra no. I don't know. But anyway, um, uh, uh, if you want to take a look, you know, what, what we should really do, we only we care about stress really in the X direction. And we really, we're really kind of just looking like right to, right to there. You can also, uh, um, so I, can switch this to the uh, x direction right there. Now that's going to be positive and negative now. Um, so if we want to change our range from this, so we go negative eight, right? And I think we'll change it. Okay. So you can see that there's blue is compression and red is tension. So you can see this right in there and um, I'm going to go to my plot tools and go list selected, go to that guy and then plot update and so you can get kind of a sense of, you know, so, so it's, it's not the same all the way across the thing because that's just not how the world works, but not how our map says, you know, the way we calculate we would treat the same all the way across. So some amount of change, the difference um, as we get over to the side, that's interesting. But we're getting a uh, compression right around negative uh, 9 in uh, that direction, like right in there. It might get a little bit more right there, but I think that's probably a lot the worst spot. Um, oh, of course, we can look. We can uh, find the thing out. Uh, so, and then, and then if we wanted to confirm um, what was on the top, right, so I could, uh, Deselect that and select like right around there. Update and then take a look right there. Yeah, I guess that is six. But um, we can see there's a jagged thing to it. So um, that actually is sort of a, one of the symptoms that maybe we would want to be interested in um, uh, applying some mesh controls. So apply mesh controls so like right in here. And in here, I might, I'm just going to go fine. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, okay, it's okay. I don't mind. Get rid of it. So you see, you put, you put more, you put more nodes, you know, which is within between each of these elements, these little nodes. That's actually where all the equations are. The equations represent the various nodes places and it solves it. And a big, a big old matrix. Um, so you're going to run it. And we didn't do too terribly bad right in there, so we, we're, that should have, it should smooth out pretty well. Um, but we could, do, you know, you could keep increasing the uh, the fineness until you didn't get any changes. But that does have a lot of zigzaggy things going on in there. So we can keep ramping it up, but uh, we might get the same results right here where we have 
any, like, th these are relatively high, like seven right here. So that's an interesting result. Um, anyway, I got to go to um, Duran Duran. And does anybody know who John, the Jane Fonda was? Yeah, yeah she was sort of a hated, uh, she was, became famous and did a, a lot of protesting for Vietnam. She was pretty, pretty well hated uh, for that. But then she made an exercise video uh, in the 80s and became, and then she married Ted Turner, who, who owned CNN. Sort of pretty famous, but she was in this terrible bar, Marilla. Oh, this is awful. I mean, there's some pretty bad um, uh, Barbarella, Barbarella, 1958 film with Jane Fonda. It's just terrible. This, 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 this is the cover. This is the painting of the thing, Barbarella. There she is, Jane Fonda, Barbarella. But the bad guy's name is Duran Duran in that awful movie. And that's where they got the name. So now you know that. And now all the people that will watch this video will know that as well. So glad we had this time together. But it was interesting, right? I did learn a little bit, got to see the little FDA thing, you know. Hey man, that's curiosity, man. That just makes being an engineer fun, right? You do, do stuff, hand calculations, and then try to see on the computer, reconcile it, try to gain some insight into things. I would like it.